The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Greetings. My name is Stuart Sutton, and I'm the Managing Director of the Dublin Core Metadata Initiative. And it's my great pleasure to introduce both the DCMI ACES Joint Webinar Series and today's webinar presenters. The webinars in our joint series are presented as a service to members of the two organizations as well as to other guests. These joint webinars address our common goal of advancing the discourse and best practices of innovative metadata design, development, and deployment. The subject matter of the webinar series ranges from the theoretical to the practical. The topic of today's webinar is VocBench, a web application for collaborative development of multilingual thesauri. Today's presenters are Katerina Caracciolo, Caracciolo and Armando Stellato. Katerina is an information specialist with the um, uh, United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization and is stationed in Rome. And Armando is a researcher at the University of Rome. Both have played very significant roles in the development and deployment of the open source Bookbench application. You will all have an opportunity uh, to ask questions at the close of the webinar by typing them into the question entry box. Um, we do ask that you hold entering questions until near the close of the webinar. I will moderate the questions and the answers. Katerina will present first and Armando will follow. Katerina, you may start your presentation. Thank you, Stuart. Um, good afternoon for, um, or good, good morning or good evening, whatever. Um, I'm Katerina Caracciolo, so Stuart, very good guess, very good pronunciation of my surname. Um, uh, I'm an information specialist at FAO and I'm also the manager of uh, Agrovoc, uh, a multilingual thesaurus which would be used um, today for, um, for the demonstration of uh, VocBench. VocBench is an editor for multilingual thesauri, as I said and um, when formalized as uh, RDF SCOS uh, dataset uh, is a web-based uh, platform and in terms of um, software project is an open source project so at the beginning I was uh, developed especially for the support and the maintenance of the Agrovoc thesaurus nowadays is, um, is a collaboration is, uh, between FAO and the University of Tor Vergata. Uh, Armando is the uh, lead of the uh, software uh, architecture group of uh, VocBench. Um, so what I'm going to give, give you today is a live demo of the functionalities of AgroVoc from a user point of view. But before going to the demo, into the demo, we'd like to uh, briefly recap the um, give you an overview of the main features. Uh, so, at least for what is important for us. It's important that it fully supports uh, multilinguality. And this means that there is no extra setup or configuration, uh, whatever required for the user to enable um, input in several languages or processing of several languages. Then it's also important that supports collaborative editing um, this is obviously important if you have editors, uh, if you have many languages. Um, so Bookbench takes care of the uh, concur concurrent use of um, um, access of the to the data. Uh, it's important for big resources and big uh, thesauri also that um, a workflow is formalized, which means that there are user roles. Um, for example, there are editors and validators and there are um, element statuses. Um, this is important because um, within the tool you can do everything. So there is no need to have an email back and forth saying, can you please take a look at this and so on. Um, and then there is an extensive support to the uh, schema for schema and data management. What does it mean? It means that um, Editors and managers, like a project manager, can look at the schema, SCOS, concept scheme, loaded 
at the properties used, and there is a functionality support for Sparkle queries uh, to export data and to load the data. And since the uh, latest version that is going to appear um, soon, there is also support for mapping. So now I'm going into uh, the presentation, um, the demo rather. Uh, this is the, um, the entry point for you. Um, I'm going to log in. Okay. So, first thing, I will uh, choose uh, my role. I, um, I will enter as a publisher because the idea of this, uh, what I would like to uh, give you uh, today is uh, a feeling for w what it means to run a project like uh, a thesaurus in a software like this. And then I will load, load Agrobook, the, very late, the latest uh, data that, uh, that we have. Now, you can see that this version is version 2.3. Uh, this is unreleased uh, and it's running on a development version, but it's going to be released uh, um, soon and um, it was so too good uh, to uh, not to give you a, uh, you know, a preview of, what's, um, uh, of the uh, latest development. So, I'm now into the uh, into Bokobank as a publisher. And um, perhaps uh, it's good to have uh, spent a couple of words about what the publisher is in this uh, uh, mind frame. So um, let's think of it as a project manager, really from the content organizational point of view. And the assumption is that everything uh, that concerns installation, data um, conversion, perhaps if you come from different formats and um, server configuration and so on, will be done by somebody else will be done by a system administrator. So the publisher is somebody who knows about uh, RDF, knows about SCOS, about um, uh, thesaurus maintenance, uh, modeling, and, uh, and that's the coordination of the content editing. And then typically there will be editors, uh, either uh, domain experts, um, or um, language experts, say translators, who will, will actually um, do the actual maintenance, like edits of the, of the content. Um, so, um, I mean, I'm looking at Agrovoc, I have this interface, what should I do? As a publisher, probably the first, uh, the very first thing I want to do is to look at the scheme. Okay, in this module, okay, here in this bar, uh, our jargon is that these blocks here, these are modules, and they give you access to, to different functionalities and different sets of uh, operation that you can, um, you can perform. So in Scheme, you have uh, uh, the list of the uh, concept schemes, SCOS concept schemes that are currently loaded. No surprise, I said uh, we're going to work on Agrovoc, and this is Agrovoc. Then we have uh, properties. So what happens here? Uh, what happens is that um, we are in RDF, um, uh, RDF world, mm -hmm. so we have uh, vocabularies for RDF, let's call them properties, in the sense like SCOS is a vocabulary for RDF, and the properties currently loaded, like present in my data set, so in my thesaurus, um, are shown here, and are organized according to this um, categories, let's say. So we have object properties, data type, annotation, and ontology projects, um, properties. So um, we are familiar, but anyway, object properties are the properties that are put in a relationship instances of two classes. So a classical example would be SCOS related. Uh, then we have the data type properties that are those that they have as a value a string or uh, a literal, um, and then the annotation, I can show you actually. Okay, so we, here we have the um, in the object properties, and uh, you can see here, for example, uh, semantic relation, and here you have uh, scores related. If you click on any of them, the information that is available about the properties is shown. Now, in the specific case of Agrovoc, 
um, we have uh, a like um, dedicated specific vocabulary which is called agroontology um, the properties of which are defined as a property of a cost related and that's why they are shown in this way so depending on the vocabulary on the thesaurus and the uh, vocabularies that you have in it you will have a different properties here uh, data type properties are yeah, probably familiar already, cost notation, uh, literal forms, and these ones are specific to agrobook. Annotation, and then ontology pro uh, properties, uh, so comments, you have notes here, and you have uh, really general stuff uh, that applies at the ontology level. Okay, so this is the, um, how can I say, the preparation, a really high level view of my data set, but then I want to look into it, and then uh, to do so, I go to the module concepts. What I have here is uh, Agrovoc, so it's, in this case, I have the uh, top concepts of Agrovoc, it's um, a few, it's 25, and it's um, they have labels in various in various languages, so I can click on any of them, and um, and what I have is uh, the split of my um, window of my screen, and to the right side I have I can look at the information available for uh, for the concept that has been clicked. Now, I have here all languages all together, which makes the interface, like looking at the uh, page, uh, at the screen, perhaps not very convenient. Maybe it's not that um, necessary either. So what I do is I go to this um, red button, and I select fewer languages for my convenience, and I get, uh, I choose English, and I choose Spanish. So the number of labels uh, that will uh, be shown to me uh, is now much uh, reduced, much smaller. I have only the English and the Spanish, so I can adjust the interface uh, uh, much better. And, um, but I'm a, I'm a publisher, so actually I would also like to see the URIs of the concept. And actually, I would like to have all possible detail about the content of in those in the languages that I selected. So, I ask Vakbench to show me also the non-preferred non-preferred terms. Okay, so I'm ready now to do a search. Search. This is pretty standard, uh, rather intuitive interface. I type here rice just to have a not just general. So I have a, a suggestion. This is a uh, the suggestion comes from the data, of course. This is the list of results, and um, let's say I can, for example, go here. I choose yeah, I choose something general. Um, I select this concept, and then what I'm going to do is to look into in detail into this concept and uh, perform some basic the editing operation. So here now the hierarchy of Agrovog is um, open, so has been uh, let's say unfolded. Um, and uh, well, Agrovoc is a big resource. We have some 32,000 concepts. Um, so, but that of course depends on what you have. Uh, so, in case your data set is rather big, it may be convenient to do something like this and to look at the hierarchy. Here, this is a compact way of, of the tree that you have on this side. Um, then, of course, you have the terminological information. Uh, so you have the, uh, the um, labels uh, in the languages selected. And, um, and actually, it's not just the SCOS label, so label in terms of the uh, terminology in uh, RDF terminology. So it's not SCOS, but we actually have a SCOS Excel, which is the reason why I can click I can do it again. I can click, for example, here, and I get some um, other tabs, so other more 
pieces of information. Um, okay. Mm, it might be relevant to uh, have, uh, you might have definitions, might be relevant to your data set, as well as having nodes or attributes in the specific cases, uh, there is no data to it. Now, I would like to um, point uh, at the fact that now you really, I mean, this is the core module of Workbench. It's really the module that is used by editors, uh, by people uh, working on the content. So here also the terminology tries to, is closer to uh, um, like a non-RDF geeks uh, type of thing. So for example, you now have uh, attribute and relationships instead of object properties or data type properties, uh, etc. Um, so, but we do have relationships here. Um, these relationships, um, where well, they link together two pairs of concepts, uh, you see them here grayed out because uh, I always have this, uh, this uh, box checked and it says show, inferred and explicit. It means that there is a, um, um, it means that, the, for example, uh, the uh, relation is produced by, is inferred, because this is a rever the inverse property that um, uh, has product. Um, and this is also quite convenient for the data, from the data man maintenance point of view. Um, then you have um, some of, not all these tabs uh, contain information that has been manually added. For example, I already shown you the hierarchy. This is the recap, Vogbench computed for you. Um, history as well. This is all historical information about the editing as uh, uh, Vogbench does it and so on. Now, Mm, this tab is the new news of the uh, of this uh, 2.3 release, and this uh, this is the tab where you can actually man maintain so create alignments so links to other vocabularies, and um, and this can be done. I can show it to you. It can actually be done in two ways. Uh, so the first way is uh, browsing, like I look into an ontology, like in a, into a vocabulary or thesaurus that uh, it's loaded into this project. Um, you remember I loaded the latest uh, data uh, of Agravoc, I can for example load the previous one, this is just for an, as an example. Um, and, uh, and here I can where I was looking at, I was looking at uh, Paddy, Rais, uh, I, for example, Oriza, Oriza Sativa, which is the scientific name of the uh, Rais species. Then I click. So the result of this operation is that uh, I will have a, now it's searching through the whole, uh, the whole uh, data set. I will uh, be able to make a statement, a SCOS statement about these uh, two concepts. And, um, and this will then be maintained, maintained and so on. Mm, let's see. The other way for, um, the other possible way for creating uh, links, uh, um, which is also supported by Vocbench, is by directly putting into a, uh, um, indicating like a URL. So, um, this could be a related match. Okay, and this is what I have. Uh, I have a related match. Uh, I mentioned that before. The grayed out means that it is a mapping relation. Um, the other way is I uh, simply in the same in the same box here. I can type uh, a uh, a URL. Uh, let's say something like this. Adding relationship and then uh, creating. Yeah, okay, of course, this doesn't work. But uh, for example, I could go uh, give, uh, do a uh, search on Wikipedia or something and get the URL from there and put it, uh, and put it here. 
I think I pretty much completed the overview of the core module of uh, Workbench. Um, something, uh, there's something else that is um, important for you to know is that uh, you can always control, let's say, you can always know what's going on in the data by looking at the list of uh, recent changes. So, um, well, these are um, actions uh, that I performed before uh, in other tests. And uh, what I can do, uh, typically I won't, won't be a publisher, sorry, this is, okay, this is a, um, um, uh, this is a term, term relationship delete, okay, this is a brand new installation, so I only have this example. Uh, so validation, this I'm looking at the validation, so a publisher may or may not do personally this operation but they can always control what's going on and the option is either accept or reject, uh, validate and then this will actually get, get uh, the operation will actually be like part of the approved um, data in the data set. Um, what else? Okay, the very last thing I wanted to show you sort of um, Briefly, I would like to show you the um, Sparkle module, which is very com useful for publishers. I switched to a different uh, development version, but that's only for for this demo because uh, it's obviously or use, usually in a, um, it's always in the same installation. Here, I copied. Uh, um, a query, a very simple query that simply asked uh, Rockbench to get all um, pairs of concepts and corresponding English labels for SCOS related. Um, then I click, I launch, launch this uh, the query and uh, I get the results. So, so this is extremely convenient feature, at least this is what I um, how I find it uh, because it really gives you like way more fine-grained grained, um, possibilities for querying the data than the, um, than the search. I didn't really mention but there is also an advanced search uh, but as a, um, that allows you to search for um, not only strings in the labels but also relationships and attributes of concepts and terms in the various languages but um, usually if you are a, a uh, project manager, like if you want to keep uh, like a uh, close eye and close control of the data, that's a very convenient, very useful feature. Okay, I think I conclude, I can conclude here the overview I wanted to give you on Workbench and I can pass on to um, Armando. Okay, I'm going. Hi all again. Yes, uh, thanks again for the introduction from me too, Stuart. Uh, I'm Armando Stellato. I am working at the University of Rome Tor Vergata as a researcher. And uh, yes, I am part of the team that is working on the development of Workbench and uh, I'm uh, leading the development of it and uh, of its associated platform of Semantic Dark, eh, that is the RDF manager which is behind it. Um, I, I will give you just, I will show you just a few slides uh, which will introduce also some uh, technological aspects behind Bokbench. Uh, I don't know if uh, you are mostly users or developers, uh, I, I will try not to bore you too much but the idea is that in any case if you have developers that may want to contribute or are interested in developing extensions for it, it, it is at least our pointers that you can bring back to them. Um, okay, uh, just a few words about how it evolved because it, it, it was born on the uh, ashes or of uh, another platform, Workbench 1.0, that was uh, actually also known as the Agrobok Workbench because it was meant explicitly for the development of Agrobok. Um, we had uh, the, the platform was based on the Google Web Toolkit, and uh, he had he used Lucene for um, indexes and uh, for the indexing and retrieval of the 
concepts, and it was based on a Protege API. Um, MySQL was used for bot management of the RDF backend in that there were some RDF API that were that was pro to, uh, provided by Protege, but actually the backend for storage was a, a MySQL database. Um, uh, so uh, we had a few limitations that uh, it was not actually uh, working uh, on a real triple stores because the Protege API were mostly related to um, specific management of models and led to Protege and there was just a, a, an OWL interface on top of it. Um, there were no possibility to import ontologies from outside, actually there was one entire data set where there were put together all the conceptualization and the and the vocabulary that are being used, um, and there were no support for alignments. Um, also, it came with the fact that it was using a custom interface for RDF. There were no Sparkle endpoint, and the export was complicated because it was he had actually to transform the model into something standard. So, uh, the idea was to uh, come together with a system that. Uh, could uh, obviously fill all the above gap, and uh, we had already in place a collaboration between uh, my university and uh, FAO, and the idea was to bring up to a new system which was uh, much more compatible with all the standards that were part of the semantic web and the RDF world, and uh, at the same time uh, introduce obviously new features. Uh, so the idea was to also give a look at possibilities like extendability of the model and also have an agnosticism, let's say, uh, with respect to the RDF uh, technologies to be used. We know that there are users that might like to adopt only open source triple stores or other users that might prefer to rely on the triple store which is very powerful and they, they already paid for uh, maybe for other needs like uh, publishing the, 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 the information on the web. So actually they could reuse their technologies in their case. Um, the idea also was to maintain, at least for the first version, the user interface very, very similar to the one that was already there. The, the point was that there were already some other customized versions of Vogbench out there. So not only for AgroVoc, but for the maintenance of other uh, Tesauri in FAO or even other Tesauri around there. Um, so the idea was, uh, okay, let's keep the user uh, acquainted with what they have and uh, let's just work on the background under the roof to change things in the way that we want. And then progressively add more features. So that was the road from 2.0 to the current version, which is being re will be released uh, very soon. That is 2.3. Uh, so this is, a, let's say, a layering of a Botbench. We have um, the possibility so to e to change uh, the triple star to be adopted, and then we have an abstraction layer on top of it, which is the OwlArt API, a set of uh, RDF API, which has been developed by my university. Um, on top of this, there is semantic Tarkey. Semantic Tarkey we will see more of this uh, in the next slides. It's a, it's a system for RDF management. Actually, it's a, um, let's say an ontology server with a high level services for managing ontologies. And then on top of these servers, one, one can put different clients. So in this sense, Blockbench is one of the po possible clients of Semantic Turkey. Obviously, it's not just a, a lightweight client. Blockbench adds much more to this because it has uh, support for um, uh, user collaboration, uh, just to say uh, one important feature of it. But the idea is that it is relying on the services which are, or, um, which are offered by Semantic Turkey. So at, at the end of this, we have the GWT or presentation layer, any of uh, any technologies could be used, and the one adopted by Vogbench is the Google Web Toolkit. So this is the architecture, again I hope not to be too boring, um, this is just an explosion of what I said before, uh, the idea is that we have an abstraction uh, around the um, uh, around the RDF and the possibility to implement different connectors. The boxes that you see on this right column are actually the possible extensions of the, the, the layers which are offered by Blockbench. Um, at a certain time, uh, at a certain point here in the architecture, there is uh, this interface with the upper layer, which is the ontology manager offered by Semantic Turkey. 
Um, semantic Turkey then is built around a set of core services. These core services can be extended so to provide new functionalities to the system. This is particularly uh, useful also in just for main uh, maintenance of the system because uh, as much as we add new functionalities, we can test them in separate modules and then add them, add them when, when, when they are ready and when they are uh, in a mature stage of development. Uh, just to uh, think about this uh, way of thinking extensions. Think also that uh, the set of specific services which are being adopted by Bokbench and which are not already in Semantic Turkey are an extension. So in this sense Bokbench is itself an extension of them or is based on an extension of the core models of the core components of Semantic Turkey. And then you have the client layer. This much depends on the technology that you are using. For instance, we, we had in the past uh, uh, an extension of Thunderbird, the mail, uh, um, the mail uh, client of uh, the, the Mozilla suite. We have a Firefox extension for, uh, for, uh, for Firefox, which represents a very thin client for the Semantic Turkey server, and obviously there is Bokbench. Uh, okay, Katarina already introduced many of the features uh, for which, okay, maybe you may be interested in Bokbench. Um, let just me add something to uh, what I already said. We have, uh, from the point of view of collaboration and in general uh, distributed access, uh, you have a full editing history that is something separated also from the validation. From the validation you can check all the recent changes and, and, and validators might accept or reject them. Uh, but then there is a full history of the system. The, the full history is the thing that is still stored in the MySQL database. Uh, then we have these RSS fields. You might register to the platform and get information, uh, progressive information about the changes which are being brought to the data. Um, you have fine-grained metadata and editorial notes. Uh, one thing about m m many people ask me about why, why I chose this COS Excel uh, standard and not just the plain COS. Well, by first uh, it was as to say, as to say a, a requirement because uh, uh, already in FIO uh, they were using uh, notes to be attached to the labels that were being edited. This could be some notes from the editors themselves or just plain metadata such as the, 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 the date in which a given uh, uh, label was added or if it was a modification of a previous one or if it was uh, deprecated or accepted. And that is, uh, we, could, we could say that labels are first class citizens as much as concepts are. So this really calls for the SCOS Excel extension. I recall for those who don't know it, uh, SCOS Excel is an extension of the SCOS format. It's a standard extension and it stands for extended labels. So in practice, labels are not just literals, are not just uh, labels, <laughs> but they are URIs, they are resources in the, in the thesaurus and then as such they have obviously a literal form that is actually the, 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 the lexical information that you're interested into, but you can attach to the URI, URI representing the label many other information. Uh, another uh, typical exploitation of SCOS Excel is to add uh, um, lexical relations, relationships between the label, a thing that you could not really do if you were using SCOS. Uh, by those who are puzzled by the idea of publishing something which is still in any case as not the same diffusion of SCOS core, uh, we offer a set of uh, APIs and uh, common light utilities and very soon they will be added also to the interface of, uh, of Botbench for producing a non reified version of the information which is inside Botbench. So uh, in any moment you can generate plain SCOS core labels starting from the SCOS Excel 1 or you can produce non reified version of the definitions which are also reified into Bokbench and, uh, and many other things. I mean, anything that is, the idea is that in Bokbench we keep information to, the, to its noblest form. But in any moment you can flatten it out and get to a more simple desire. Um, the application, okay, obviously there is support for multilinguality as Katarina shown you and the application itself is also multilingual in that you may have uh, interfaces, uh, the, the user interface can appear in different languages and at the moment we have those for English, Dutch and Spanish. 
but more are coming. Uh, as an Italian, actually, I could contribute. <laughs> um, native are really have support. You have seen that we have an interface for Sparkle. Katerina just pasted uh, uh, um, a query, but uh, you will see that you have uh, interesting features such as uh, syntax completion and highlight. And the very good thing is that the syntax completion is based on the same information which is inside Bookbench. So, for instance, you might get the list of um, namespaces which are being used and it can suggest you the, 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 the prefixes to be added to the query. Um, yes, an important part is uh, large-scale thesaurus management. Now, Vokmanch has been taught with the idea that we are not managing a bunch of concepts, but we might uh, have the need to, bunch, uh, to, to manage very large uh, repositories. So everything in Vokmanch is taught to be is taught for scale out. Uh, everything in interface is not meant to show. Uh, yeah, a huge amount of information, but it can just show a few and then you can search and increase the information that you're looking for. Extendability, I already spoke about this, and uh, yes, there are, um, Bokmanch is probably the platform which has the highest support for multiple concept scheme management. Um, the idea is, get, is that you can use all of the flexibility that SCOS allows for schemes, and at the same time, we are introducing uh, integrity constraint validation for checking when things may be broken by, by some improper use. Or a typical scenario is that you are loading a data from outside, and maybe this data is not correct. So the, the, the idea is that you can uh, run these checks and have them uh, support you in uh, repair the data. And obviously, last but not the least, uh, Bookbench is completely free and open source. I will jump now to some slides more ahead. Um, yeah, uh, this is again something about extendability, but I will skip this. And uh, oh, for those who are interested in developing uh, services for Vokbench, we have implemented a new interface which is very powerful. The idea is to reduce the amount of code very briefly uh, without going into details, but you see a portion of code in the upper part of the screen where you have to declare the, the services which are available, then you have to implement the services, the service and make a lot maybe of checks which are usually uh, quite boring to write and uh, they may get the, the, your code error prone. The idea is that uh, we develop a sort of framework behind Bookbench for which uh, you might uh, benefit from the present of uh, from the availability of specific annotations in Java which bring on the semantics of RDF. So the idea is that you can write a method in a very short way like the three lines of code that you see at the bottom part of the screen and then you have um, uh, these uh, Java notations which bring in the semantics of Bookbench and can carry on the checks for you. So in this case, for instance, the, the check is top concept here is made between uh, a, a given concept and uh, a certain scheme to, to check if that concept is the top concept of that scheme. As you may, say, as you may see here, there is this annotation telling that the cost concept that we might pass to the, to, the, to the method actually has to be present inside the data. If it is not, you will get a specific exp ex um, uh, um, uh, exception. Uh, in the second case, as you may see, the, the, the second parameter is optional and actually there is a default value which is main scheme. This means that in any moment uh, you can decide not to pass this value and you will rely to this um, to, to, to the main scheme that is being chosen inside your specific project. Oh, sorry. Uh, so, another thing which is uh, uh, which comes with the offer of Bookbench is a very lightweight um, client module. I already introduced it uh, uh, before. Uh, actually, 
it's a very um, easy way if you want to test something before you put it inside Bookbench. Uh, oh, I see that Caddy Frey is among the audience. This is uh, the Unified Astronomy uh, Thesaurus, and it's uh, Thesaurus uh, exactly about uh, astronomy uh, that is being developed by the University of Harvard. And uh, um, you might see it loaded inside the Firefox because uh, there is this very thin client for uh, Semantic Turkey, which is uh, um, an extension of Firefox, and it makes direct calls to the, to the, to the Semantic Turkey server. Uh, the advantage with respect to Bokmanch is uh, obviously doesn't need any complicated installation. You just drop the XPI on uh, Firefox and you run it. Um, obviously, it has a lot of features less than Bookbench in that it provides no user collaboration and not validation, not history, no history of the, the action and so on. It's, a, as I say, a very thin client which, however, offers all of the features for, for modeling which are provided by Bookbench. Uh, and uh, look, uh, I, I think we may go uh, actually now to, 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 to see a demo of Semantic Turkey, but before that I will go, I will show you something around these resources. Uh, one moment, I need to change the screen. Yeah, by first, Bookbench has an official site which is here. This is the official site of Bokbench, and uh, from here you may get all the information about it. There is also a, um, a page on uh, the five pages, here it is. This is a page inside the AIA, AIMS, Agricultural Information Management Standards uh, at FAO. And uh, this, this community actually deals in general with, uh, that is, with, with what the name says, uh, Standards for Information Management in the Agricultural Domain. Uh, if you are interested in the overall thing, you may register on AIMS for everything, or you may just register on specific the topics that you are interested only on, like uh, Semantic Web in general, or even in the specific about Bokbench. Uh, in the Bokbench page on AAMs, uh, they describe uh, all the information about the system in general, and also how it has been applied to the management of agro. Uh, this is uh, instead a more general page about the system, and uh, you may have obviously downloads, documentation. We are still working a bit on the documentation. We have a very good user manual which has been done by our FIO partners, and then we have a. Uh, um, and then we have um, some pages for um, telling how to install Bokbench and uh, to, to make a quick, first quick test drive inside your machine. Uh, or other than the Bokbench site, you might be interested, depending if you are again a user or developer or maybe even just a system administrator, on uh, the semantic Turkey site. This describes the RDF framework which is behind Bokbench. And again, you have um, in the documentation here, which describes both the RDF server, which is being used also by Bokbench, and the thin R5 Fox client. Uh, you have also an advanced user manual. This manual is very useful in that it provides you information which are for uh, uh, system and administrators, and which are not evident by the interface. This is just by like working a bit behind the roof, under the roof, and uh, configuring Bokbench for things which might uh, be tailored to your customization needs. As an example, um, when you uh, many many users ask us to to put some possibility for customizing the, the way the URIs are written. So we provide this feature, actually it is now possible to completely rewrite in Java a dedicated module for uh, um, building uh, the, the way the URI, for, sorry, for uh, establishing the way the URIs are, are written, or you might choose uh, in a customizable uh, in the, in the default module, uh, how to customize the, 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 the shape of the URIs, like uh, generating them from uh, a serialized date time, or creating a UAI, uh, a UUID, sorry, or uh, creating a truncated form of a UUID. 
So this is another possibility offered by the system. I will also let you give a look uh, about, oh, one other thing about Semantic Turkey, it's also, um, uh, I will change window. Yes, um, uh, it is also a sort of uh, um, experimental field for new features that will be added to Workbench in the in the in the next future. Um, for ex for instance, um, there is this uh, interesting uh, integrity constraint validation. Uh, module. This will be added in Bockbench very soon. Probably not for the 2.3 because we are eager to release Bockbench uh, with uh, the new alignment features and uh, other smaller features that we are adding in these days. But uh, um, this is this will be another large change that uh, we are eager to add. That is a set of uh, um, checks that are, can be done on a um, on a thesaurus. The idea is that many of these checks are not necessary if you build the thesaurus from scratch from inside Bookbench. But uh, a typical scenario is that uh, you load um, uh, a thesaurus uh, uh, inside Bookbench and then you have to deal with it. The typical scenario is that the thesaurus is written in SCOS but not in SCOS Excel or uh, the thesaurus uh, has some errors, uh, or the thesaurus is still loadable in RDF, but for instance, uh, URIs contain spaces which are not very good for Sparkle, or uh, maybe there is no scheme, and we enforce the use of schemes because they are um, best practice in the management of, uh, of uh, thesauri. Uh, or, for instance, there are top concepts, where there are um, uh, concepts which are not top concepts of any of any scheme or they are just dangling because there is no concept over there. So the idea is that all these concepts, all these um, checks may be launched on the system and uh, they will give a report. Uh, here this thesaurus is well written obviously so all of them will provide a, an empty response but for instance I think that here if I check no label schemes, cons concept schemes that have no label I run this and I see that, for instance, the, the, the scheme that we just added uh, lacks of a SCOS preferred label. And in fact, if I go to the scheme and I open it, I don't see the label that is on top of it. Uh, so in this case, it prompts you with the things that are missing and it allows you to, to add the new information. Um, another thing is, uh, uh, an improved um, uh, an improved resource panel you have seen in in uh, in, um, uh, in the box bench that there are many tabs and actually some of them are actually overlapping the point was with respect to the SCOS standard the point was that again we had an interface that was stoked uh, with the users in mind and uh, at the very um, dawn of Bench. And then what we had to do is to uh, avoid too many changes and just things on top of the other. The, 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 um, the big change that we'll make in the future is to revise everything in, uh, in light of this cost standard and try to reorganize the tab in a better way. Uh, also we will try to make a more performant uh, query system that will uh, retrieve information uh, more uh, easily and quicker quicker and also we will be able to inspect information from outside. Uh, as you can see from, again I need to switch the window, um, just one moment. As you may see here from, uh, as you may see here from the alignment tab, uh, okay, let's try. Uh, let's try this one. I add now very shortly uh, a new. Oh, let's let's put uh, a real a real resource. Um, OK, 
cap. This is the resource. So, for instance, if I, if I know what to add and I can directly add the resource, obviously this has nothing to do with the groups there, but it's just an example. So, I put um, road mesh, let's say, and I create it. At the moment, you might always inspect the resources which are being pointed in that you might click there and you are redirected to the new resource. What they are doing here is that we are just pointing to the URI and if the resource is on the web, uh, that is, it is exposed through either HTTP the referenciation or a Sparkle endpoint, we will get that information uh, and if it is, there is a content uh, negotiation for HTML, you will see it on the, on the screen that way. The idea is that in the future we will have an internal browser for this, so actually the resource will be uh, checked for uh, RDF and if it is available, it will be shown from inside Workbench so that you may see the data organized in the usual way, much the same way that you see a normal concept. Uh, this is just an example in uh, Semantic Turkey. I really need to change the, uh, the tab here. And uh, as you may see here, um, there is, for instance, I may try to load um, the DBpedia uh, information about Rome or even the Z mice that we saw before. This is still experimental, but as you may see, we get all the information about the maze inside the same interface which is being used for the application. We still need to, to make some optimization in, in the way that is being shown. But the idea, the same thing will be done in Bookbench. So in the same user interface that you use to browse the internal concept, you'll be able also to see concepts which might be referenced from outside. The idea is to make uh, uh, possible to uh, deal more um, in a more user-friendly way, even with concepts which come from outside. Currently, in the current alignment model, which will be um, published with the 2.3 version, you are able either to put directly the resource in the combo box, like I shown you before, or you are able to, um, or you are able to uh, browse, browse the, the the local projects, but this requires for the data to be available inside Bookbench. Usually what will you do, what will you will do is that if you need to make a big uh, alignment effort between two resources, probably you will load the other resource inside Bookbench and then you will use the browse feature and the search feature. That will be very easy. But uh, this requires the resource to be loaded inside. We might also want to uh, improve the possibilities in the case that you are just a normal user who requested no resource to be loaded inside Bookbench and you are getting information along the web uh, for knowing which is the best thing to, 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 to match. Or maybe you have you, you, maybe you are starting from the from the other side. Maybe you have a resource on the web and you're looking for the best way to map it inside Bookbench. So the idea is from inside the application you may explore the web like a link to the browser. You see the resource and then you um, conversely you explore Bookbench that, that is your loaded dictionary to check which is the best representing mapping with respect to the one that you found on the web. So, still more to go, but I hope that the alignment feature that we are adding already now is uh, already providing a lot of information. Another thing, just to check how fast is this, uh, uh, this um, resource loading feature, uh, check it in uh, Semantic Turkey. Okay, this is the typical, <laughs> yeah, okay, maybe DBpedia was responding, but actually it's very fast. And you see how huge this resource is. There are a lot of definitions because this is the description of Rome in DBpedia, and uh, there are really a lot of data, but they are, all of them loaded very, very quickly inside Semantic Archive, and thus it will be in Bookbench. Uh, so, I think that uh, that's all. Maybe if you give me two minutes, I will uh, uh, show another feature that is coming, again, to give a, a look ahead. Uh, just one moment, because I need to switch application. Um,
OK. Um, OK, so I suppose now you see Firefox. Let me resize it. Sorry, I, I had to load another version to, um, to show this other feature, which is under development. Um, OK, so load this. And uh, OK. This is a, a system for a typical usage scenarios that many times happen to us. Is a scenario in which uh, users ask us to uh, load information from uh, a data sheet that is usually an Excel file or some other format for, for showing spreadsheets. Uh, we developed a system inside Semantic Turkey that will be ported also to Blockbench for loading information from an Excel file. So in this case, I will show you the Excel file. Um, where is it? So this is an Excel file describing uh, describing a few information about uh, uh, data which has to be loaded inside uh, um, inside the. Uh, to be transformed into a thesaurus. You see information about concepts, their relationships like being narrower or, or they prefer labels and if, the, if they are top concept or, uh, or just uh, uh, under another concept. Uh, so then we move back to uh, the sheet to RDF platform. This is the platform for transforming uh, RDF sheets, data, data sheets into RDF. And we see here the Excel file represented inside the application. Then we have a very powerful language for transforming the information inside the, uh, in, in, into RDF. The idea is that you don't need to, to, to learn all, all the information about the language, but actually can be most of the information can be inferred automatically based on the information which is found inside the, the, the Excel. So the idea is, uh, the pattern is uh, the famous uh, convention over configuration. If the Excel file is uh, at least understandable by the machine, it is able to write the conversion itself and you don't know you don't need to do anything. So in this case, for example, um, the, the, the mappings between uh, the, the data which is found in Excel and the, um, the, the, the results to be applied is, is, is written automatically by inferring it uh, by, from the headers of the Excel files. But uh, there may be more complex cases or cases which, where you are not just converting triples one by one by just crossing each line which is, we, we, with each Header, but maybe you need to create more complex patterns. Uh, we are trying to put many of these patterns, like the pattern for creating uh, SCOS Excel uh, verified labels, inside the system. But still, you may need to have a, a very customized case where you need to do something. In, that is the case in which you can work on this uh, on this language that you write uh, that, they, that, that you found on the right, and you might customize the information to produce new data. So the idea is that then you generate triples, and here you have a, a very long list of all the triples that have been generated, and you might inspect them. In any moment, you see that they are separated by, I don't know if you see it very well from, from the projection of the screen on your side, but uh, here the, the rows are separated by um, uh, light blue and uh, white stripes. Uh, this means that each of these triples are related to a single entity. So each of the triples in the same color are related to the single entity. Uh, you may also see the relationship between the triples here and the and line of the, the row of the Excel file where they come from. So when I click on the second color, you see that the indicator will move to the, to the second row and so on. And then you are able to, uh, I, I'm not sure if this works because it was a development version here, but uh, 
when I make generate triples, uh, yeah, maybe I, I need to configure something, but um, the idea is that this information then will be projected inside the, the scheme that you see on the left, and then it will they will be ready to use. Uh, this is already possible in the current version of uh, mm, semantic tarkey that is the things that you create can be used to be ported inside Bobpatch. We already have a couple of users on the mailing list that uh, um, used sheet RDF from uh, semantic tarkey and used the content to bring information inside Bobpatch from the Excel file that they had. Um, the, the language is quite powerful. You have also the possibility, you don't need to write, for instance, these codes, which may seem like an artificial uh, way of creating the things. The, uh, most of the cases, you just get labels from, from the users. But the, the language offers you possibility to create URIs in a, a deterministic or randomic way and uh, to create them on the basis of the, of the content of the, the, the labels. So actually, you may get a very simple file from the users and this still allows you to, to, to create a thesaurus inside, uh, inside Semantic Tarkey and Bokbech. So, very last move on uh, uh, the, the site. Uh, Bokbech offers you support in terms of mailing list. There is a discussion group where users can uh, pose questions, can ask questions, and hopefully being answered by us. And uh, there is also a development discussion group for questions related to the development of extensions for Bookbench, or in general, even to the, its compilation or whatever it needs. So I leave you with, uh, uh, now it's time for the question and answering uh, session, and uh, I leave you with a slide um, related to the context that I gave you before. Uh, just one moment, I need to switch back to it. Well, I think I will begin uh, since our time is getting short. Um, we have about 12 minutes for some questions, and I already have one. Um, the question is, how difficult would it be to import a terminology from the Apollon TDE to Vokebench? I hope I pronounced that correctly. Right. From where, sorry, the terminology from uh, where? Ap uh, from, uh, uh, from the Apollon, A-P-E-L-O-N, T. Uh, the uh, Apollon TDE to Vokebench. Okay. Well, I, I never tried it, so <laughs> I can't tell you. But uh, obviously, we can uh, uh, we we can make a test. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. No, because this is a very specific. I mean, I, I, I never try to 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 import it. I, I must say that uh, the, the the typical case is if the thing is. I, I mean, these things that you are saying is are already in in the SCOS format, or uh, or you are just talking in terms of uh, information that is available there. I, I I don't know. I from the question I don't know. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The the point is uh, in any case, if if it is not in SCOS, then obviously you need a, a SCOS expert that knows how to model this information in the most appropriate way. Right. Uh, and then um, and then you may import it into Bookbench. Uh, so there are two steps actually. The first there is reaching the standards, and then. Checking if you, 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 if uh, the things are ready for being uh, managed inside Bookbench. What I mean is, uh, in terms of compatibility with the standards, Bookbench is able to manage almost almost 100% of scores. It's still lacking the use of collections, but apart from that, it's, it's completely able to manage scores and scores Excel. Uh, the fact is that, uh, for instance, as I said before, we prefer to manage labels uh, in with, using the SCOS Excel extension because it allows us to provide more information about them. So the point is, uh, uh, some information need to be lifted 
to some specific standards like SCOS Excel instead of SCOS or the definitions need to be reified and we provide information for doing it, uh, we provide sorry tools for doing it automatically. Uh, so in this sense if the information that you have respect the standards it will be immediate to, to, to bring them inside Vopbench. Uh, the, 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 the other part of the question which is not strictly related to the tool is uh, given a, a certain terminology or thesaurus or whatever, uh, how is it possible to bring it into SCOS? And uh, my answer is uh, SCOS is a very, um, on, the, on the certain side it's quite shallow with respect to more uh, complex formalism like OWL. But at the same time I must say that it's probably a superset of the many formalism that have been developed for thesauri until now. That was obviously a requirement of SCOS when it, it has been developed. So, to my experience, all of the thesaurus that I, a thesauri that I, I ever had to, 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 to lift to the SCOS format always, um, ne never, sorry, had uh, any, 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 anything which was more complex than the SCOS model allowed. Another question. Yeah. Would it make sense, and if yes, how easy is it? to manage OWL ontologies with Vocbench? Uh, to manage OWL ontologies? Well, Vocbench uh, obviously is uh, from uh, uh, exactly the same, uh, from how its name says, Vocbench is, uh, is a vocabulary in the sense actually of the Zauri and uh, concept schemes management tool. Um, we are looking forward to uh, development of OWL uh, ontologies inside Semanti Turkey. Uh, actually, Semanti Turkey already allows for that. It just misses, it just lacks uh, some services for the management of OWL complex, uh, complex expressions like restrictions. Uh, but uh, it is already possible to manage OWL ontologies in Semantic Turkey. Uh, this means that not only they are available in the Firefox interface, but it means also that the services are already there. And uh, for the future, we might consider the, um, the collaborative uh, development of OWL ontology inside the box. The point is that OWL ontologies and vocabularies usually have a very different scenario, uh, vocabularies or thesauri, usually have a very different scenarios. Uh, for thesauri with very large amount of data, collaboration inside a dedicated tool is a must. If we think about OWL ontologies, in my experience, I, I worked also in working groups for the definition of standard ontologies, people usually end up in uh, writing them in text and uh, they might discuss over wikis or over uh, Git repositories uh, because our ontologies are very small usually. So th there is no really a big huge need for, uh, for collaborative management of our ontologies inside, uh, inside tools. But again, this is not a reason to completely avoid the, 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 the features. Now we are focusing more toward providing more and more features for what he already is able to do. But uh, yes, uh, our management is on the roadmap. Okay. Is there a difference, uh, is there any difference of features or capabilities between Vokebench and Semantic Turkey? Um, well, uh, the, 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 main, uh, the main borderline between the two is, uh, okay, Bok, uh, Semantic Turkey in terms of editing, in terms of um, possibilities in general with what they are both able to do will be always a bit ahead of Vokbench because as I said before it is also our experimental uh, field for prototyping new features. Uh, but uh, in terms of uh, collaboration, in terms of uh, user management, uh, this is something that is only present in Vokbench and is totally absent from Semantic Turkey. Semantic Turkey, I mean in terms of the, I suppose that when you make the question you, you were talking about the Firefox interface for Samantha Turkey, right? I, I don't know from the question. <laughs> I mean, um, uh, Samantha Turkey is the, is the RDF backend of Bokbench, so it is part of it. Uh, 
and uh, it is used both by the Firefox interface and by the bot page. Uh, so in this sense, it's a component of both. If the question was about uh, the user interface inside Firefox and the, 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 the interface of Blockbench, yes, the Firefox interface, as I said, it has functionalities for managing OWL and it has features, some features, which usually it's always one version ahead. It has features which are being developed, maybe tested, and then they will be brought to the next version of Blockbench. On the other side, uh, Blockbench completely supports collaboration, where uh, uh, some, the semantic target Firefox interface is more sort like a desktop tool. It is for one single use only, user only. Okay. Has FAO developed um, any best practice documentation on community de on the community development processes? Um, the collaboration question uh, with collaborative editing and uh, how that would work. Well, uh, part of it is what? reported in the user manual, but I can pass the word to Katerina. Maybe she can reply better than me for the FAO side. Thank you. Uh, yes, so in fact we have um, um, a, uh, apart from the actual, like the user, man user manual is something that relates to how to deal with buttons and uh, menus and stuff in Rockbench. So um, doesn't deal with neither the content nor the, um, the organizational side of editing. Um, on the content side, we have uh, guidelines for um, um, editors. So guidelines uh, that, um, um, so the main point is that um, for a single uh, thesauri of a uh, small size, um, especially in classical scenarios, so you have uh, people trained in um, modeling, like uh, uh, people with a, li with a library background, for example. But now, more and more, you have uh, domain specialists working on maintaining uh, these sort of resources for one reason or the other. Um, maybe because they needed to maintain their own data sets, for example, or maybe um, it is so because uh, the, uh, the vocabulary, the thesaurus, or it's so large that, uh, that can do without the specialization of expertise. And so these people um, will face the classical problems or what should I do with this term? Is this a synonym? Is this, what is this? Um, where should I put it? So for addressing this kind of questions are addressed in the guidelines, so which are actually like uh, um, uh, public, although we are, it's a document under evolution because we try to cover um, various domains and especially to explain the use of um, the agroontology vocabulary that I meant, that I shown during my uh, my presentation. So the, the the properties that are specific to this. Uh, um, not only the cost properties, but really the specific, the ones specific to the domain. So in this sense, yes. And then we have something very slight, like uh, suggestions, I guess, it might evolve over over time about uh, how, um, what are the expertise and what are the typical profiles of um, the roles involved into into the workflow. So advice how. Um, who are the editors, uh, who are the translators, uh, what do you need to be a publisher, what do you need to be, uh, what's advisable to be a validator. Well, the bottom line is that not all projects, I mean, all projects are different, and so you do not need to, to have editors, uh, validators, public, um, in, uh, in different people uh, in all projects. And you might have one person, well, di groups very differently organized, but, um, yeah, we um, try to give our view on this. Did I answer your question? This question. We have time for... Yes, thank you very much. Uh, we have one last question uh, in our available time. Can someone use Semantic Turkey in their browser to interact with a remote Vokebench installation? Absolutely, yes. Um, 
actually not really uh, not really directly block bunch, but uh, when you have the three layers, you have block bunch that is querying semantic Tarky services, and sem uh, semantic Tarky is the interface towards uh, a, a data server. So the idea is that if you if you query a remote data server like uh, an Aulim or a Sesame server in general, you might connect semantic Tarky to that same server, and the data will be visible as as well and you can you are free to edit it the only thing that you will be missing if you make changes directly from semantic turkey is that these changes will be not record will be not recorded inside the uh, bookbench validation list and the in the history list but that's the only thing if you need to make something that it's easier to do from semantic turkey or you are doing changes before starting actually to work with a community on bookbench you can do that from semantic turkey as well we do it regularly, actually. Thank you very much. Uh, our time is basically up. Uh, there are still several questions uh, remaining in the queue, and we will um, address those questions offline um, uh, after the webinar. Uh, I want to thank our presenters, Katerina and Armando, very much for a very interesting webinar. And Stefan, do you have any announcements before we close? Hi. The recording of the webinar and the PDFs of the slides will be available to the attendees within 48 hours of today's live broadcast. So please uh, be on the lookout in your emails for a follow-up link to the recorded webinar and the PDFs. That is all. Well, thank you very much for joining us, um, all of our guests. Thanks for you all. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a good day, guys. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.